actually one of the funnest things I have ever done. Goodness me, here we go. Howdy folks, it is Barry here. Hope you are well wherever you are in the world. Welcome to our kitchen. Have you ever been in a situation where you are craving a massive bagel? I know I have. You guys have sent me a recipe. We are going to try and make an emergency uh, cheesy bacon egg bagel. Oh my gosh. The thing is, I've done these emergency recipes before where it's kind of like you've got a big party, you've got people coming over. I'm just here on my own at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't know, we've done like the emergency peanut butter cup where we just got a standard flanton, or we did a Kit Kat recently, or Snickers. Really fun if you got uh, you want to do something a little bit quirky for a party. Oh, wow! Today, this is kind of like a massive cheesy bacon egg bagel, but it's not going to be as an emergency because you've still got to let the dough prove. Yeah. But Pat, with that said, whilst the dough is proving, we can actually cook some of the filling ingredients so we can keep ourselves busy and then hopefully warm it together in foil and have the most epic brunch ever. Yeah, I don't know where that come from. Right, let's get going. Now the recipe you guys sent me, which was on a website called Delish, uh, but they use that Pillsbury refrigerated dough that you just crack in like that. I, I can't get hold of that. So uh, what I thought I'd do is I'd get some of the um, sort of halfway point, this bread mix, but this is a ciabatta one. I like the idea of there being kind of like an airy dough with a nice crust on there. We've made ciabatta here on the channel before, but that kind of goes against the simplicity of the emergency giant bagel thing. So Boston, what I think we'll do is we will just make uh, four lots, which I've got, I think it's 500 grams in each bag, two kilos of this. Uh, you just add water and some oil. We'll make it all up and then determine uh, like if that is gonna be way too much for this bowl or possibly not enough. All right, so we need a big old bowl. All right, so we're gonna need a pretty big bowl. One, two, three, four, hello, uh, ciabatta mixes. Ciabatta believe this is gonna be big. Each mix needs 350 mils of lukewarm water, so that is 1.4 liters. How do I know that? I just measured it. Eight teaspoons of olive oil. Five, six, seven, eight. Dun, 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 dun. We grab our head whisk. I do have these dough whisk attachments for head whisk, uh, but some people when I've shown these in the past go, oh, I don't have that. So I just wanted to show that you can actually do it with a standard electric whisk attachment. Right then, that is a blooming big piece of dough and it's just, it's not sticky, it's not tacky. It feels like Krang from the Ninja Turtles. We're gonna leave it, oh, hello. Leave it in this bowl for 10 minutes just to rest and relax. And that sounds like a great idea for me as well. I just don't know if we've got a bit too much. Yes, because in the world of this dough and the world of the Spice Girls, too much of something is bad enough. Side note from the future, yesterday I made a video that you're gonna see after this one, homemade Golden Grahams and uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and I got some leftover dough that I've left in the fridge overnight, and it's turned into the most rock hard <laughs> cinnamon snowman. Sounds like a great name for a movie. Rock hard cinnamon snowman too, Revenge of the Spice. I'm gonna grease this crazily because I don't wanna add any more scratch marks to this. I'm actually gonna do both. I'm gonna grease with butter and some olive oil. And the great thing with that is obviously with it being more of a fluid, we can like work that all around every single little nook and cranny. That is a proper greased bunt. B-U-N-D-T is a five letter word, which would be amazing on Wordle, wouldn't it? It's actually got a trademark of it. That's pretty cool. Uh, but it basically means a ring-shaped cake made in a fluted tin. So this is not the chimney or the stem or whatever I called it. It's the flute. <laughs> I'd like to announce that this size compared to that is pretty tiny. So we are not going to need all that dough, especially given it's going to prove and once it bakes, ah! So what I think we'll do is we will take it quite high and once it bakes, if it comes out of the tin, we'll just deal with that and then we can cut it flush. Just drape it in, move you up. And yes, I have just got dough all over my camera again. It is the hardest thing to clean out, which is why I don't do it. All right, so I reckon another third of that. Let it settle back in. All right, guys, have fun. That's still got to rest anyway, so it will rise up. I, I'm actually really, really happy with that. I don't want to push it any higher. We have to let this stand for about 25 minutes. So let's hop to that and see what 25 minutes in heat does to it. Several bad puns later. All right, it's been 20 minutes left to stand and uh, prove a little bit. And I think we might need to trim it back. <laughs> yes. It's like giving some bread a haircut. Uh, and I'll see you 
once I finish with this client. Of course, my other fear now is as it bakes, it's gonna sort of go, yeah, and then go and be like halfway up the tin. That said, we can do it again with this bowl, which is <laughs> just getting absolutely gigantic now with the off cuts from the haircut. So we're gonna give it about half an hour in the oven. If it starts to catch too much on the top, uh, I can put some foil on, but we really, really need to make sure it's baked through. I guess you might have to cake it actually, like bamboo skewer, see if it comes out clean because it's such a deep pan. It's not like a flat thing. Whew. Few inches later, um, it's been in there 10 minutes. It is a really hot oven, by the way. Ooh, uh, and I don't know if you can see there, it has risen. It's got a lovely golden crust on it, and we might end up cutting that off. So I'm gonna give it another five minutes, but if it starts to catch too much, I will put foil on that. I just wanna make sure the main thing in the middle is not raw, that would be horrendous. Scrambled egg. We're gonna take uh, the butter that I had left over from uh, grease in the pan earlier. It's about a tablespoon there. I'm gonna put it just about there for a minute. This is a bowl with 10 eggs in it. It's now a bowl with pepper in it. And some cream. So then I'm just gonna agitate it. I'm agitating my eggs, I'm so angry. Uh, just sort of curdle it, make little waves make our scrambled egg. And whilst it's still a little bit wet, I'm gonna get chives in. I've said it before, kitchen scissors are underrated, amazing. One last season again. Of course, this is to your liking. So I think this might be one of the first times I've ever done scrambled egg on camera. <laughs> That's nuts. I've done like over 1500 videos now. All right, so I'm taking off the heat whilst there's still a little bit of moisture in there because it'll still keep cooking. I'm gonna keep turning it around. That was a low heat, by the way, for a bit more control. Ooh, that is a lovely colour on there, to be fair. Oh, what a crust. Oh, it's going through clean, but it's not had the recommended baking time on the pack, let alone the fact that we've, like, made a lot of it. Just to be safe, I'm going to wrap it in foil to stop that colour, because actually we're going to slice that bit off anyway. <laughs> Sad times. <laughs> We'll shove it back in just while we do the bacon. Smoked rashers, got quite a bit there, which has surprisingly caught your attention, hasn't it, mate? Yeah, I mean, I normally grill it, but hey-ho, let's, let's uh, just want to cook bacon. And in other news, with our spare dough, I think we've created a monster. There's so much. <laughs> All right, so whilst our bacon bakes, let's get the bread out. Woo! Which hopefully shouldn't look much different. Oh, you golden gorgeousness. Yeah, I'm not gonna touch it at all. I'm gonna let it fully cool down and we probably will have to trim that top off to even make getting it out from the flute uh, a little bit easier. All whilst my bacon bakes. Oh, I'm well happy with that. 15 minutes in the oven. Not quite up there with putting it on bamboo skewers as you'll see in a future hacks video. Spoiler. It's time to slice off Using the flute as our level, this top crust. Oh yes, looks like a cake now. Mmm. Uh, right folks, this is uh, pretty much cooled down now. We've got a baking tray because if this comes out, if, we have to halve it and then build it and bake it again. I think we just go for it, okay? Oh, I think that just dropped out. <laughs> yes, yes, that's massive. That went rather swimmingly. Hopefully, if I've done this right, we've got a base and a lid. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh my gosh, it just fits. Ah, yes. So the top, we are gonna brush with some butter. Beautiful. And then we're gonna sprinkle sesame seeds all over it so the butter will help grip that. Very cool. And some poppy seeds as well. That's the lid done, it's gonna get warmed up. Now this side gets a bit cheeky. We have got some cheese here which I'm just gonna overlap slightly and just give us a nice sort of base and now we lift on the scrambled egg. So as much or as little as you like. Now the bacon, which I'm just tearing slightly to get a nice even layer. 
that looks so, oh my gosh, so, I mean, it looks good. Just a little bit of extra cheese to kind of hold it in place as it melts, because that is the next thing to do. So I've been told what I'm supposed to do now is bake them separately like this, but now that I've done it, I like the idea of bringing it to the middle and then sticking this on, oh my goodness, so that that cheese there can grip to the top here. Baking it in the oven for about five minutes to do just that. Little side note, actually, as I warm my oven back up, I was, I've got some pork mince in the freezer that I did buy to stick that in there. But as I was making this, I was thinking, oh, I wanted to do like a sausage patty around it. But I thought it might make it a little bit too like oily and fatty as it cooks and possibly warms through and seeps all the way in. And at the moment, I hope you'll agree, it's pretty healthy. Goodness me, here we go. Good luck, my friend. As if by magic, Mrs. B has just come back from a yoga class. There's nothing more healthier to show us than this brunch which of course she can have a taste of. Oh my goodness, look at that. That is insane. Absolutely redonk. <laughs> oh, you beauty. That's turned out, I mean, visually, way better than I thought it would. That's like com commercial grade here. Like we're making, mo we're making movies. I asked you to close your eyes. I don't know why, sorry. Can I look? Yeah, look at this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How was your yoga class? It was very, very relaxing, thank you. So oh my gosh. You've got scrambled egg in there, smoked bacon, two layers of melted cheese, a seeded bun. Do you want some? Yes. <laughs> it might be a fair bit of bread ratio, mine, but I did cut it down, alright? <laughs> yes. Um, 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 um. I mean, it's quite a big bread ratio, isn't it? Yes, I was just thinking that. <laughs> I'm glad I trimmed the bottom mine. I can't quite believe how much stuff there is in it. The plan is if you're ever in an emergency, you've got some friends over for brunch, just yeah. whip one of these together. Just whip one of these yeah. together? Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, other than proving the dough, it was quite quick. I really want to put sauce with it, but I feel like I should just have it as is. Oh yeah, good bit of ketchup. That's so good. The bread is so soft. Mmm. Really fresh bread and the eggs and the bacon and cheese, it all just works really well. That is insane. I was gonna put like a pork patty for it as well, but I think that might have been like just too too much. Yeah, you didn't need it. No. It's a lovely post-yoga snack. <laughs> <laughs> so did that get your seal by uh, of approval, Mrs. B? Are you shaking? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Don't forget to check out the other emergency recipes I've done, like the Snickers, peanut butter cup, lots of fun stuff. A lot of you guys are sending me other ideas, like a deviled egg was pretty cool in an Easter egg uh, mold. I thought that was pretty cool. Thanks so much for watching, folks. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Make sure your notifications turned on if you are, so you get told about all new uploads. Follow me on social media and consider becoming a patron for extended versions of videos, even this very one, and your name at the end of the videos, and lots of other perks and giveaways. Um, right, hungry? Mm. See you later. If I take you to my crib, you'll be in for a thrill. I'll be spitting on the menu, chuck some food on the grill. I like to do my cooking at 10 to 9. But you can do it any time and you'll be just fine. That's not the sitting dog, is it? That's the eating Becky. It's a new yoga move. Thank you very much to everyone who like, donated to mine and Phoebe's walk. Yes. The charity walk that we did, it was really kind. We raised a lot of money, yeah. really kind donations. That, we just mentioned it. In oh, you FaceTimed you, didn't we, in a video? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That was when I did the free TikTok breakfast and some of you were like, I hope you made Mrs. B and Phoebe breakfast when you got back. I was like, yeah, I made three of them, but they were half eaten. But thank you seriously for the donations. It was uh, really, yeah, really kind. It was. wasn't, I wasn't expecting so many people to donate, no, so thank you. And a really good cause as well. So cheers, guys. Make this if you like, uh, and then do some yoga. Ah. <laughs> oh.